wife has arrived at the hospital, Commissioner. Dr. Jackson's already there. Roger, I'm on my way. Yes, sir. Sally, you're pregnant. You've got to remember that. We were lucky this time, but another fall could have disastrous consequences. You've got to be more careful, Sally. I realize that, Dr. Jackson, but it happened so quickly. One moment I felt perfectly fine, and the next minute I was out. I'd better talk with the commissioner. Please don't. He's got enough worries. I don't want to cause him any more problems. All right. But I'm ordering complete rest for the next few days. And I would like to have the law on my side to enforce it. She's going to be just fine, Commissioner. Calling the ambulance was my idea, you know. She wanted to pop into the car. But I know you. You wouldn't want me to take any chances with her. Where is examining room, Al? Just around the corner. Uh. Fortunately, I am blessed with a cool head, which gets even cooler in emergencies. But when I saw her lying at the bottom of those stairs... This way. Oh, yeah, right. When I saw her lying at the bottom of those stairs, well, the first thought that came into my head was ambulance. You, you go ahead. I'll wait here. Sally, are you, are you all right? We're fine, Mac. Could you hand me my shoes, please? Yeah, what happened? Oh, I just had a little fainting spell. They shouldn't have even told you about it. Well, shouldn't you be in bed? Are you kidding? That's how I got into this trouble. What did the doctor say? He said the usual thing. That'll be $30, please. Oh, Sally. Well, Mac, really, I'm fine. Mildred just got a little carried away. That's all. How do I look? Just beautiful. I still look beautiful. And charming. Just sort of all around wonderful, I guess. Oh, you say the nicest things. Now, how could anybody know I'm here already? Hello? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, just a minute. It's for you here. McMillan? Who? Uh, oh, uh, yes, put her on. Uh, hello? Yes, of course I remember you. How are you? Well, it's nice to hear your voice again. What? Now? Well, I'm afraid that's impossible right now. Mac, on account of me? I just told you I feel fine. Now you go ahead and you go back to work. You sure? Mm-hmm. Well, I... Oh, no, no, that was my wife. Oh, well, thank you. Well, I'd love for you to meet her, of course. All right, Lee, I'll... I'll be there as soon as I can. Goodbye. May I play detective? You are your father's daughter. That was not just another voice out of the past. From the way you reacted, it sounded like you just heard the Hallelujah Chorus. Now, she wants you to do her a favor, but you're a little reluctant because you're afraid I'll get jealous. Which means she's very attractive. I'll call her back, tell her I can't make it. How long ago did you know her, Mac? Oh, about 12 years. 12 years? Go see her. 12 years can do all kinds of things to a woman. <laughs> Stay. 
Just terrific. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> Mac. Hello, Lee. Commissioner Mac Miller. Oh, Mac. <laughs> it's so good to see you again. Um, this is Ben Matthews. Hi. How do you do? And Errol Wilson. Hello. How are you? How are you? And the guys. Hi. Uh, come here, Mac. I want to take you to my dressing room. Excuse me. Mac, you are easily the best-looking police commissioner I've ever met. I assume I'm the only police commissioner you've ever met. I've followed your career, Lee. You've done very well. I'm proud of you. It's even gone better than you planned. Not true, Mac. Not true at all. I'm sorry. Forgive me, but things just aren't going according to plan at all. What's wrong? Jason's left me. I'm sorry to hear that. Here I am, rich, famous in a band. That's funny, isn't it? I can remember so well when we talked about our futures. All I wanted was a career and money. Why did you call, Lee? It's been a very long time. We couldn't go back if we wanted to. And I, for one, don't want to. I know, Mac. I've seen her pictures in the papers. She's adorable. But it's just that I didn't know where to turn. And then I remembered there was a guy who once thought I was a nice person. He still thinks so. What do you want me to do? Well, I suppose what I really need is some legal advice. Jason handled everything, personal and business. And he even owns half this club. Well, I'm supposed to open here in a couple of days, and I'd really like to get out of it, if possible. I've made all the money I intend to for that scum. I don't practice law anymore, Lee. I can recommend several attorneys, good attorneys. Anything you say, Mac. Mac. Tell your wife not to worry. I won't try to retain you in any way. Come in. Miss Lee Richards? Yes. Commissioner. 
Uh, do you know about this already? I know about what? Um, could I talk to you for a moment, sir? Sure. Uh, excuse me. Do you know her? Yeah, we're old friends. Oh. Well, then, sir, I suppose that she's already told you about her husband. You mean that they separated? Yeah, she just told me. There was a telephone call to headquarters this morning from his secretary reporting him missing. Well, he's probably out on a bender somewhere. No, I'm afraid there's more to it than that, sir. We've done a little checking, and there's a good deal of evidence that he's been murdered by Mrs. Richards. No, you don't know her. But well, I've been seeing her for almost a year now. And I love her. <laughs> love her? Oh, that's funny, Jason. Very funny. You're incapable of loving anybody but yourself. Well, as long as you feel that way about it, there shouldn't be any problem about the divorce. Divorce? You want a divorce? The sooner the better. No divorce, Jason. I'll never give you a divorce. You haven't been keeping up with the laws, darling. Proven incompatibility is what's necessary in California. I'll divorce you whether you like it or not. <laughs> Lee, what are you doing with that gun? Lee, that's just bad melodrama. You've never even fired that gun. Lee! I don't understand. There was no gun. No shots were fired. But you did argue with him. Yes, Friday night. We just heard it on the recorder. Isn't that the way it happened? Up to the part about the gun. That never happened, I swear it. And we argued at home, not here in the office. Well, what about the blood on the carpet? I don't know what that is or what it means. Well, the recording and the blood stain would seem to indicate that a man, probably Jason Richards, was shot to death in this office. Well, a recording and a blood stain is not necessarily proof of a man's death. I know, sir, but there are other indications. Now that, sir, is the sound of a body being dragged out of this office. And there's another blood stain over here, where the murderer paused while holding the body to open the door. You can see that there's a groove in it, sir, like a, a man's heel was dragged through it. All right, let's assume that a person was shot and dragged through that door. A, it doesn't prove the person was Jason Richards. B, it doesn't prove the person shot was dead. And C, it doesn't prove the person was shot by Lee Richards. Now, does it? When was the last time you saw your husband? Friday night. After we argued, he packed a few things and left. Has he done this sort of thing before? Yes, we didn't have much of a marriage in the last few years. Do either one of you own a gun? Yes, I do. Where is it? I keep it in the night table by my bed. Would you mind if Officer Ryan went with you to pick it up? No, of course not. This is serious, isn't it? Well, it's, uh, it's a little too soon to tell. Same old Mac. Always making life a little nicer than it really is. I'll see you later. How soon will you know if that blood is the same type as Jason Richards? It won't be long, sir. We've already checked with Mr. Richards' doctor. His records are being rushed to the lab. All right. Tell Hank I want a voice graph made of this tape. I want to determine if the voices at the beginning and at the end of the tape were recorded in the same room. Yes, sir. We sure do meet people at the wrong end of the stick, don't we, sir? How do you mean? Well, you know, here I've been collecting your records for maybe 10 years. And now for the first time I meet her. And I may be taking evidence that'll cost her life.
the red. Surely I don't need all of those. You sure do. The doctor's prescribed the vitamins himself. The vitamins? Where'd the rest of those things come from? Well, some the pharmacist said couldn't do any harm, and uh, the rest were my idea. Mm. And now, the latest headlines. The governor has vetoed the tax rebate bill, sent it back to the Senate. Oh, well, that's no surprise. Tort singer Lee Richards' husband, Jason Richards, head of the Richards Music Corporation, was reported missing today. Police Commissioner Stuart McMillan has refused to comment, but his presence at the investigation indicates possible foul play. Lee Richards? He called her Lee. She's the Hallelujah Chorus. Well, she's a good singer, of course, but don't you think that's going a bit far? If I had known that the voice out of Max past had a body like that to go with it, and to think I sent him right over there. Well, you just have to keep reminding him you're pregnant. I'm not going to resort to that tactic, Mildred. Oh, are you kidding? Now's the time to fight fire with fire. Keep fainting. Even if I were worried. Just a little. I still wouldn't use my condition. I'll get it. Hello? How are you feeling? Why didn't you tell me that was Lee Richards on the phone? Oh, have you been resting? Do you know it was only last Christmas you gave me one of her albums? How could you? I gave you one of her albums because you asked for it. Well, under the circumstances, I think it was a rather tacky thing to do. Uh, I'd, I'd better come home. No, don't come home. Not on my account. Mac, what happened to her husband? There's every indication that her husband's been murdered. Oh, Mac. I was calling to tell you not to wait dinner for me, but I'll come on home. Enright can handle the investigation. You talk as if you think I'm jealous. Well, you're not, are you? Of course not. I'm going to take her album, and I'm going to play it again. I love the way she sings. Maybe you could tell her that for me, Mac. I'll tell her I married an angel. Oh, get her to sing it for you. Mrs. Denny, you've been Jason Richards' secretary for years. Did he and Mrs. Richards ever have words here in the office? No, I never heard them arguing. I make it a practice not to listen for that sort of thing. You like Mrs. Richards, don't you? Oh, yes. Mrs. Richards is, is a wonderful, talented woman. And she's very easy to get along with. I, let me run my office. No interference, if you know what I mean. Yes, I think I do. Uh, look, Mrs. Denny, I'm a friend of Lee's. And the more we know, the more we'll be able to help her. Now, a business like this must be filled with young girls trying to get a start. I'd imagine some of them pretty aggressive in trying to get Mr. Richard's attention. Aggressive is the nicest word I've heard for it. Most of them would do anything to cut a test album. And how does Mrs. Richards feel about that? Now, I know you're not the type of person who likes to eavesdrop, but there must be some argument you couldn't help overhearing. Uh, Arguments about other women? Mrs. Richards has a right to be upset. I mean, wouldn't you be if you'd made your husband a rich man and he chased everything in skirts? Anyone in particular? Are you asking me officially? Uh, as the police commissioner? I'm not a gossip, you know. As the police commissioner. Good. Virginia Duke. Even give her a job at the club. A cigarette girl. <laughs> she brings Mr. Richards a lot more than cigarettes. If you get my meaning. You make it very easy for me, Mrs. Denny. That one knows what she's about, all right. She fancies herself a singer. She's just waiting to replace Mrs. Richards on and off stage. You discovered the recording and then you called the police. Is that right, Mrs. Denny? I always play the tape recorder first thing Monday mornings. Mr. Richards usually comes in alone on Saturdays and leaves some dictation for me. Their argument sounds very conveniently recorded. Mm. Mr. Richards records all his conversations. He's got this thing about lawsuits. Could Mr. Richards have taken the recorder home with him Friday evening? No, I was using it when he left. Well, of course, he could have used another machine and then just transferred the tape. Or he could have returned for the recorder after everybody had gone, taped the argument at home, and brought the machine back on Saturday. Well, if Mrs. Richards argued with her husband at home on Friday night, and that was the last time she saw him, what was she doing here in the office on Saturday morning? 
How do you know she was here? Oh, I took her up on the elevator around uh, quarter twelve Saturday morning. I, I remember because it was just for lunchtime. <laughs> Good little clock watching, I guess. Did you take her down again? No, no, she must have gone down herself while I was eating lunch. Did you see Mr. Richards? No, but then he, he usually gets in before I do on Saturdays. But I, I know he was here because his car was parked in the basement garage when I punched in that morning. His car is not there now, sir. But there's a large blood stain in his parking place. We've already taken samples. We're comparing them with Jason Richards' blood type and the samples we found upstairs in his office. You think it's going to match, huh? Yes, sir, I do. If Jason Richards parked his Rolls Royce head in, that would mean the trunk would be right about there, huh? Yes, sir. We also estimate that the amount of blood that was found down here and in his office almost guarantees that the body was dead. You think Lee Richards is guilty, don't you? Everything seems to point that way, sir. Her husband admitted that he was seeing another woman. And you think that when Jason Richards asked for a divorce, she shot him, dragged his body out of the office, down the service elevator, out through that door, all the way over here, lifted the body into the trunk, drove the car off and buried him somewhere, huh? Well, it is logical, sir. It does make sense. It doesn't make any sense to me. Commissioner. Yeah. We just picked up a report that one of our Pacifica units found a Rolls convertible abandoned off the coast highway. The vehicle's registered to Jason Richards. I think this will do it, sir. The spare tire has been removed. Yes, sir. Probably to make room. There's another blood stain there. It's obvious the body was taken someplace in this trunk, sir. And by a woman. A dress button, sir. With blood on it. It's all the same blood type, sir. The office, the parking lot, the trunk, and the button. And most likely all from the same person. That's an assumption. Is Jason Richards' blood the same type? Yes, sir. Yes, Anne. Mrs. Richards and Officer Ryan are here, sir. Have them come in. Thank you, Doctor. Mac. My gun. It's missing. I checked the house out thoroughly, sir. No sign of it. Lee, did you go to Jason's office Saturday morning? Oh, yes, I did. Why? He called me and asked me to meet him there, but I never saw him. When I arrived, he wasn't there, so I waited about a half hour, and then I left. Were there any indications that Richards had returned to the house and picked up anything? No, sir. We checked for that. If he was planning to go anyplace, he must have figured on coming back soon, because his shaving gear was intact and his closets were full of clothing. We did find something in Mrs. Richards' closet. There's a fresh stain on his dress. It looks like dried blood that's been partially washed out with cold water. And there is a button missing, sir. Of course I don't think she did it. I mean, I don't know how I can help. Everything I know is right here. How well do you know Jason Richards? I work for Lee, and that's it. I started with her way back. I don't talk to anyone else. I don't listen to anyone else. How do you feel about him? I feel about my music, and that's all. After all these years of working with Lee Richards, surely you must have some opinion about him. In my opinion, whoever killed him was a music lover. Probably ought to get the Grammy Award. Lee's a great singer, that's all I know. What about her husband? I don't know anything about Jason. You mean you don't even know that he's your partner in this club? <laughs> you guys have a way of finding out everything, don't you? Okay, he's my partner, but he wants it kept quiet. When did you last see him? Over a week ago. Well, now, isn't that odd? I mean, considering that you're getting ready for your big opening? Look, I run the club. All Jason wants are the fringe benefits. They ought to send that dame to the chair. Even that's too good for her. California uses gas, although they haven't used it in over a decade now. You're breaking my heart. Your relationship with Mr. Richards was uh, serious, I take it. I'm serious about one thing, mister. My career. And that dame's a career crusher. Now, you find her dead in some alley, then you come straight to little Virginia. 
because I'll be your number one suspect. But until then, bug off. Did you learn anything? No. She's just a typical little country girl frightened by the big city. Yeah, I'm fine. Is this the gun he used? You in love with her? Yes. Enough to kill Jason Richards for? Yes. Only you didn't. Even a piano player couldn't miss with a gun sight like this. Unless he wanted to. You mean you're not going to arrest me? Oh, we're going to arrest you, all right. Assault with a deadly weapon. It'll give you a stiff fine and a suspended sentence. That's the best we can do for you. He's here. He's pulling into the garage right now. Do you believe it? Yes, I do. When you take that surprise out of your voice, it's not very flattering. Oh, look, I knew he'd show up, honey. I kept telling you he would, didn't I? I wasn't asking. You want me to turn off the record player? No. I've always loved that album. I still do. Except for that big scratch you put in it when you put it on. I was thinking of your husband. He's had to listen to her all evening, probably. He could use a rest. Mildred, could you find another way of phrasing that? Okay, I'll work on it. But right now, he's coming up the stairs. Go on and faint again, honey. Mildred, how did my mother ever let me take you with us when I got married? Because she knew that you needed me more than she did. She was right. Hi. Hi. Hi, Hi sweetheart. Hmm. How are you feeling? Fine. She's exhausted. And who can blame her, considering that... I'm fine. What about you, darling? Did you have time for some supper? You missed a wonderful meal here tonight. Your wife and I shared a filet of sole by candlelight. Oh, so romantic. I wish I could have made it. I only had time for a sandwich. Uh-huh. Well, it's a shame you couldn't have been here with us. I'd already set up a lovely table by the fire when you finally called. Good night, Mildred. Good night. I'll just turn off the record player. Sorry. You know, that was very sweet of you to call, Mac. I always call when I'm going to be late. Oh. Well, how are things going for Lee? Everything we uncovered points to the fact that she killed him. So you're convinced she didn't, right? Yeah, something like that. Is she still as lovely as she was when you first met her? If anything, she's lovelier.
You're so honest. I hate that quality in you. She's not anywhere near as lovely as a girl I married. I love that quality in you. As long as we're on an honesty kick, why didn't you tell me why you never even mentioned her before? Why are you making such a big thing out of Lee Richards? She's not the only girl that's popped up out of my past. I know, but I didn't mind all those high max. You never even remembered any of them. I don't think you ever forgot Lee. It was a long time ago, Sally. Twelve years. Oh, before I was born. Yeah, I robbed you right out of the cradle, didn't I? I'm not joking. I wasn't alive until I met you, which makes me about five years old. Don't you dare make a remark about that's how I'm behaving either. This is very difficult for me. Nobody's ever going to pop up out of my past. I don't even have a past. You know how many years it took me to find a girl who could make that statement? <laughs> I love you. Mm. From what I've learned, sir, Ben Matthews was involved with Jason Richards and much more than just the club. He arranged women for him and just about anything else that he wanted. Maybe Richards had something on him. Forced him into taking him in as a partner. Forced him into getting girls for him. Forced him once too often? Yeah, that's a thought. Yes, Ann? District Attorney Chapman to see you, sir. Have him come in. Here we go. Hello, Commissioner. Sergeant. Hello, Bob. How's everything down on the fourth floor? Well, we still get to put a few criminals behind bars. Certainly uh, a lot more than when you were defending them. Which brings us to the Lee Richards case. Still the same, straight to the point, Scotsman. All right, let's talk about it. My boys feel they've got enough to press for an indictment, but you're recommending against booking her, and I want to know why. Too many things about the case I don't like. Such as? Well, there's no dead body, no murder weapon. There is a tape of the argument with her husband, her missing gun, the blood-stained button in the trunk of the car. That's all circumstantial, you know that. Now, come on now, why don't you admit it? You've been biased in this case right from the beginning. That's a lie. Now, come off it, Mac. Everyone knows she's an old friend. Well, it wouldn't matter if she were a complete stranger. I'm telling you, this case stinks. Then maybe you ought to resign as police commissioner and defend the case. Personally, I think I could take you on this one. Maybe I should. Might be fun taking this case. That's what bothers me, how you can defend a cool, calculating woman who killed her husband with precise premeditation. Ah, save it for the jury. If Lee Richards is as cold and as calculating as you say she is, why would she kill her husband moments after the elevator operator saw her? And according to the tape recorder, the very convenient tape recorder, the murder was committed at the heat of an argument, which of course throws premeditation right out the window. If a woman takes a gun from her home, sticks it in her purse, and takes it to a man's office, we can presume she premeditated the use of it and killed him in cold blood. Are you sure it was premeditation or... Uh... Was it passion? You can't have it both ways. I'll take it either way. Guilty is guilty. Now, I want an arrest. When I have enough evidence to warrant an arrest, I'll make an arrest. And then I'll let you know. Well, you better let me know soon. Because I don't intend to be a sitting duck for the press when they come screaming for blood. I intend to let the mayor and everyone else know exactly what and who the problem is. And you, Sergeant? Well, sir, there's a lot that I don't understand about you and Mrs. Richards. Uh, how long you've known her, uh, and... Uh... All right, I'll fill you in, so you can have an unbiased opinion. I first met Lee in my second year of law school. She was singing in a cabaret near the campus. Now let's have your unbiased opinion. Do you think I'm wrong too? Yes, sir. I do. Love is just a 
you're here. Come in. I'll turn down this music. I was just listening to my latest master. You know, it comes out in a couple of months, and well, I was thinking of adding some strings and maybe a cello. What do you think? For only fools believe it's true. Oh, I, I, uh, it sounds perfect the way it is. Oh. Well, then it's settled. We'll print it like it is. <laughs> Mac, I um, called that lawyer you recommended. He was very nice, but after he went over all the evidence, he said I'd be a lot better off if you were handling the case. Oh, it's just an old lawyer's trick to double the fee. <laughs> well, I'll remember that. Uh, would you like a drink? We have work to do. Okay, counselor, you ask, and I'll answer. When did you first learn that your husband was seeing another woman? Well, you know women, Mac. I, you can't put an exact time to a thing like this. You just wake up one day and you know, that's all. I, like you've always known. I, well, maybe it's the way he didn't kiss you or didn't mess up your hair or... Maybe it's just the way he didn't pat you on the fanny. I don't know, but all you know for sure is that you know. How long ago was that? Uh, about six months. It was a long time before you confronted him with it. Well, I was hoping that he'd have his mid-forties fling and come back to his senses. Did he have many affairs? <laughs> If it moved, he went after it. Well, they weren't anything much to him. They were just casual affairs. Did you ever have a private investigator check up on him? Well, what good would that have done? I didn't want to torture myself with knowing who she was and seeing her face and knowing where they met. What kind of a girl is he attracted to? You're pursuing the theory that he left town with another woman, aren't you? I'm pursuing every theory. That's why I want to know what kind of a girl he was attracted to. Well, generally speaking, he liked them tall, shapely, athletic. He liked to sail his boat. You know, we used to do a lot of sailing in the old days. Well, um, he liked them young. I... Yes, I would definitely say that it's a young girl. No, I want to talk about the big discrepancy. You say the argument happened here in your house and not in the office, huh? Definitely. We argued, but I didn't kill him. He left home alive that night, and Saturday he wasn't in his office. I'd swear to that under oath. Take a lie detector test, anything. I didn't kill him, Mac. I didn't. That's what we're going to prove. I'll take that drink now. What would you like? Scotch. Scotch? Nothing else? Uh, no, Lee. Nothing else. Well, now that's what I call inviting. It's going to take all my control not to make it a threesome. But you will use control. Wait a minute. I hear him coming. Get into bed quick. I'll whiten down your face with some powder. Mildred, I've told you I refuse to take unfair advantage just because I'm pregnant. I can't stand women who use that trick just to hold on to their husbands. And you know why they use it? Because it works. That's why. When he gets here, you will keep your mouth shut. That's a suggestion. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi. Oh, Mildred, what's for dinner? It smells good. What's with her? Laryngitis, I hope. How was your day? Mm, fine. Mm. <laughs> you kicked me. Mm -hmm. Poor Lee. 
How did you know things were going badly for her? I didn't. I was just feeling sorry for her because she let you get away. Mm. Hello? Hello, Commissioner. I think I've got something. Well, sir, it seems that a Miss Erickson always called Mr. Richards just before each of his business trips. Where do we find her? No address. But the return phone number was a uh, photo studio. You know, sir, one of those kind where they rent you a camera and... Candy Erickson. Wow, what a dish. <laughs> you know something? Business has dropped off almost 25% since she left. She really knew how to bring out the art in a fella. They'd go in for a 15-minute appointment and wind up shooting her for hours. Once they start, they can't take their eyes off her. Did she ever talk about any of her boyfriends? Talking to Candy about her social life. <laughs> That's like trying to discuss troop movements with the Army Chief of Staff. Although I heard lately she's been playing house with just one guy. What's his name? Well, she didn't say. But if I know Candy, he's a player with plenty of dough. Uh, when did you last see her? Uh, Friday. I called her house, but there was no answer. Is she in some kind of trouble? We don't know yet. I'll tell you something, she's unreliable. She owes me a lot of money, you know. I advanced her half a week's pay. Could you give us her address, please? Also, all the photographs of her that you can spare. Hey, pal, I get a lot of money for pictures of her. We know you're only too happy to cooperate with your police department, don't we? <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. In this case, I think he put them in. Did Miss Erickson leave word she was going out of town? No, she didn't. And it's most unusual, because she always likes to make sure that I'll take care of her mail and deliveries. Mm. The closet's full of clothes, sir. Nothing to indicate her taking a long trip. And there are men's cosmetics in the bathroom. Tell me, did you ever see her in the company of this man? Well, that's hard to say, because there were so many of them. <laughs> um, would you mind if we looked around a little more? Just take your time. <laughs> Be sure the door is locked when you leave. What now, sir? <laughs> you can try it. Okay. Now, if we follow your theory... Jason Richards and Candy Erickson became lovers. And they had a hideaway somewhere outside of San Francisco. Not too far away. They use it for weekends. Right. There's a torn program in here. And a book of matches. And some tissue paper. Yeah, well, check it for fingerprints. In fact, check everything for fingerprints. Yes, sir. Commissioner, I was wondering if... That's my question. This girl I know gave me the key to her apartment. Told me to pick something up. What? It's personal. You ever been here before? No. It's funny. You know exactly where the lamp was. In fact, you walked right to it. In the dark. I got good night vision. You also have a good memory. Matthews, if you're involved in this case, your club license could be revoked. You know that? I'm not involved in anything. Tell me about it. Uh, there's nothing to tell. I set Candy up in his apartment about a year ago. We had a nice thing going. Until Jason came along, huh? That's right. Jason was as dumb as I was. He really thought she was going to run away with him. He told you that? He rubbed it in. Nothing he liked better than to take somebody's girl away from him. Believe me, all she wanted was a career. What did Jason have on you? Nothing. Why? Well, he forced you to make him a partner. He stole your girl out right from under your nose. You might just want to see a man like him dead, huh? You're reaching, Commissioner. When did you last see Candy? Yeah, about three months ago, I told her I was tired of picking up the tab on this apartment. And she laughed and told me to get lost. I notice you still have her key. Is there a law against that? No, but it could indicate you're lying. A girl like Candy Erickson would have her locks change after she threw you out. Okay. I haven't seen Candy all along. She promised as soon as Jason got her career going, she'd get rid of him. Do you expect to find her here tonight? I didn't know. But when I heard that Richards had been killed, I figured the best thing for me to do was to make sure nothing of mine was around. Tell me, 
Do you think Candy Erickson capable of murder? Uh, you'd really love to put the blame somewhere else, wouldn't you? Well, I'm not going to be any help to you there. This folk singer was appearing in Sausalito three weeks ago during one of Jason Richards' long weekends. Richards' fingerprints are on that program. The owner of a record company is always looking for new talent. Yes, sir, but Candy Erickson's fingerprints are on the program also. All right, so we brought along a lady friend. Now I suppose you're going to show me a book of matches, which means that somebody likes seafood and took a drive out to Sausalito for dinner. Sorry, Commissioner, but I don't see the relevance. You don't find it relevant that Richard spent long weekends with a photo model and said model and Richards are both missing at the same time? Suppose I do. How does that alter the evidence that Lee Richards killed her husband? Well, we won't know that till we cross the bridge into Sausalito. Now, will we? What exactly do you want me to do, Mac? Keep your eyes open. See if you can spot anybody who knew Jason. And if we find they did have a place in Sausalito, how will that help? All we have to do is find some evidence that Jason was alive on Saturday morning. We can break the back of Chapman's case. And if we don't? Sorry. I can't say I've seen either of them. We have a lot of territory to cover, Fred. Do you know where we could rent a couple of cars? Sure. Two blocks up the street and a short ride. Can you spare three walkie-talkies? Sure thing. I hope you find what you're looking for, Mac. Wow, what a figure. No wonder you're looking for her. You know, if I looked like that, I doubt if I'd be pumping gas for a living. Have you seen her? Ah. Uh, sure I won't do, Anson? <laughs> Thank you very much. No, but she sure is pretty. Did you say she was a model? Boy, that's what I'd like to do. Anything to get out of here. You'll find something, Mac. You're never wrong about these things. I didn't call about that. I just want to know how you're feeling. Oh, I'm feeling terrific. I whipped two mountain lions and three tigers and Mildred all this morning. You take it easy on those mountain lions. They're not as tough as Mildred. I know, you're right. Mac, do you think you're going to be home for dinner? You know, I don't like going to bed with just a candle-lit table for company. Blow out your candles, Sally, and take a nap. I'll be home in time to wake you up. Mac? I know that Lee's going to come through this thing all right. Goodbye. Commissioner! Nothing, nothing. Mac, maybe Chapman's right. Chapman's wrong. Somewhere, somebody's going to be able to recognize a picture of those two. Let's keep looking. Well, I can't say I know him by the names you've been using, young fellow. They look like the Jays. <laughs> I showed them a few houses, but they wanted something a little more private. <laughs> Tell me, uh, do you know if they bought anything around here? Well, now, I hear they bought the Macintosh place. Thank you very much, sir. It's in a little cove about five miles north of town. I'll be parked in front. Good work, Enright. Did you hear that, Lee? Yes, I'll meet you there. Enright, call the sheriff and get a search warrant. And tell him to dig up all the information he can on the Jays. Yes, sir. I think we're in luck, sir. The agent has sold the house to Jason Richards, identified him, and Mr. J is the same person. Have we really found them? Kind of looks that way. Enright, why don't you check the boat and the dock? We'll check the house. Yes, sir.
lipstick. Is this going to be too tough for you? Like the man said on the ship, damn the torpedoes. It's dated Saturday. Still fresh. That means someone was here over the weekend. Oh, man. Freezer compartment. Well, that's an old icebox. Yeah, but there has to be a freezer somewhere. This is the frozen cut of waffles. Here it is. Meat, vegetables, TV dinners. Enough frozen food here to last two people for a long time. Most of it seems to have been bought within the last couple of days. What makes you say that? There's no frost on it. You see? Packages on the bottom here are covered with it. Look. Mm. If only we could find who sold them this on Saturday. Yes, it could prove that Jason wasn't in his office on Saturday. Can't be in two places at the same time. Commissioner! Out here. What's wrong? Candy Erickson. Her body was floating under the dock. like an obvious case of a double murder. Yeah. A jealous wife kills her husband and his mistress. Just a little too obvious, don't you think? Sir, the district attorney's office is going to press for an indictment, whether we like it or not. And if anything about Candy Erickson's death points to Mrs. Richards, they'll have a prima facie case. There's still a body missing. But until we find Richards or some other answers, the investigation is open. Okay, sir. Uh, what do you want to do about Mrs. Richards? I'll drive her back to the city. I think the best thing would be for her to turn herself in. Shame. Pretty young girl like that. I'd sure like to get my hands on the person who did it. You can help, Fred. Put out an APB to apprehend Jason Richards. Richards? He's dead, isn't he? Let's find out. And lean on your coroner, hard. I want an A to Z autopsy on that girl, and I want the results now. I'll do what I can. Talk to you later. I want you to question every grocer in the area. I have a hunch Richards bought some eggs, milk, and a large amount of frozen food sometime Saturday morning. But the elevator operator said he saw him in his office on Saturday morning. He saw his car, but he didn't see Jason Richards. We don't stand a chance, Mag. Why not admit it? We'd have stood a better chance if you'd told me everything. I have. No, Jason could have gotten a divorce if that was all he wanted. But no, he tried to frame you on a murder rap and be willing to disappear for the rest of his life. He'd have to have a pretty strong reason. What have you got on him? You never did miss much. It's more than infidelity, isn't it? He's been embezzling money from our company for years to pay for his habits. I tried looking the other way and it got worse. And soon he was forging my name on checks. And about a year ago, he sold several hundred thousand dollars of company stock without authorization. Did you tell him you could have him thrown in jail? Yes. I told him he could have his freedom in exchange for 20 years hard labor. Do you think he killed her? I don't know why he would. To hear him tell it, he loved her more than life. Well, suppose he didn't tell her about his plan to frame you until he'd taken her to the cabin and she refused to go along with it. Now, he'd already committed himself. He left an awful lot of blood around. A tape recorder in the office. It's too late. He had to do it. 
Possibly. But I don't think he has the guts to kill him off. McMillan. District Attorney Chapman would like to speak to you, Commissioner. Put him on. Yes, sir. DA. The Highway Patrol found Candy Erickson's car this morning. Lee Richards' 22 caliber pistol is in the glove compartment. Her prints are on it. Uh, there's an awful lot of static in this area. Would you repeat that, please? The Highway Patrol found Candy Erickson's car this morning. Lee Richards' 22 caliber pistol was in the glove compartment, and her fingerprints are on it. Let's get it over with. We'll meet in my office at 4 o'clock. There's no longer any doubt about it, Commissioner. Bullets were removed from Candy Erickson's brain. The ballistics test indicate they were fired from Lee Richards' gun. Where's the rest of the autopsy report? On its way from Sausalito. In the meanwhile, Miss Richards, I intend to charge you with the murder of your husband, Jason Richards, and Candy Erickson. Now, you have the right to remain silent. And I warn you, anything you say can be used against you. And Commissioner, this one I'll make stick. Will you, Mag? You're remarkable, you know that? Most wives would love to see their husband's old girlfriends behind bars. You really cared for her, didn't you? I thought I did. Well, then you just better go out and save her, because I don't want my competition behind bars looking romantic and unobtainable. Ooh. All right, I'll save her first thing in the morning. Hello? Commissioner, you were right. Jason was shopping for groceries on Saturday morning. Yes, sir, I've got a man here who can positively identify him. Is he willing to make a statement? Well, he's already agreed to. We'll be at your office in about half an hour. Right. So, certainly, but... Oh. What would I ever do without you? That's something you'll never know. <laughs> He stopped in about noon or shortly after. I remember because my wife had just brought lunch and I couldn't eat until he finished his order. He didn't buy much, uh, milk, eggs, that was it. And you're absolutely sure that it was the same man? Oh yes, sir, I know Mr. J real good. Most of the time when he comes in, he orders a whole mess of frozen foods. But not this time. Thanks very much. We appreciate you taking this trouble. My pleasure. If Jason Richards was alive on Saturday, who was killed in his office? If someone was killed in the office. The rest of the autopsy report, sir. Yep. The copy has been placed on your desk, sir. Thanks, Ryan. Of course, there's another possibility. Lee Richards arrived at noon, but no one saw her leave. Jason Richards could have arrived at the office in the afternoon while she was still waiting for him. She could have killed him in the office, and then she still had time to hide the body and get up to the cabin and kill Candy Erickson. Possible. Except for this. Take a look. No water on the lungs killed instantly by the first two bullet wounds. I don't see anything here to clear Lee Richards. Look at the time of death. According to the autopsy report, Candy Erickson's been dead approximately 48 hours. Today is Wednesday. That means she was killed sometime Monday afternoon. 
But Mrs. Richards was in San Francisco all day Monday. Talk about your ironclad alibi. I apologize, Commissioner. Of course, with this, all charges against Mrs. Richards will be dismissed. Oh, I don't know how to thank you, Matt. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Sarah. <laughs> Well, the paperwork's all done, Mrs. Richards. You're free to go. And I want to thank you, too, Sergeant. Oh, well, I'm not really so sure you should. I mean, I really thought that you were guilty. Oh, uh, well, that's all right. They almost had me to that point. I'll say one thing for the commissioner, though. He never wavered. He knew you were innocent. That's because he knows me so well. <laughs> oh, Matt. Mm. Do you think your wife would mind if I kissed you goodbye? Well, Sergeant Enright is here to ensure propriety. I don't think she'd mind. You don't mind that I kissed her, do you? Of course I don't mind. Why should I mind? What was it? Just an innocent peck on the cheek. Frankly, I don't know a woman alive who wouldn't want to kiss my husband. Anyway, darling, you know how I feel about jealousy. It's beneath a woman to concern herself with such a cheap emotion. I don't care if she kissed you or if she didn't kiss you. I think you've made your point, Sally. Now, have you found anything edible in there yet? Mmm. Mayonnaise, you want some? <laughs> Just mayonnaise? Mm-hmm. Mm. Let's try the freezer. Uh, let's see. Enchiladas. Ah, macaroni and cheese. When did Builder buy that? Yesterday. Mac, if you don't want to eat frozen food, why don't we send out for some of that fantastic pizza? Yesterday. say goodbye properly, or hello either for that matter. Jason, have they found him? Sit down, Lee. Mac, you're frightening me. What is it? It ain't gonna work. What are you talking about, The Mac? murder of your husband and the murder of Candy Erickson. Oh, Mac. Don't make a bad joke, please. You planted two sets of evidence. The first to prove your guilt, the second, the alibis to prove your innocence. By very carefully incriminating yourself, you made it look like Jason had framed you. No one, including me, would ever suspect you of framing yourself. Mac, this isn't funny. No, it isn't. Friday night, you brought a tape recorder home, baiting Jason into an argument, and you recorded it. When he asked you for a divorce, you pulled a gun on him. He told you to put it down, and you did. Mac, then Jason left for the office, picked up candy, went out to Sausalito to the cab, and you stayed home here and edited the tape. You took out the part about putting the gun down, and you added gunshots and the sound of a body being dragged across the room. Then the same night, you took the tape recorder back to the office because you knew that the secretary would play it first thing Monday morning. Mac, I'm not going to say Then on here, Saturday, Mac. you went back to the office to make sure the elevator boy saw you. Then you went back to Sausalito, found Candy alone because Jason was at the market, and you shot her. Then when Jason came back, you shot him too. Well, that's outrageous. How dare you? All that blood, missing button, the ditch car, you planted all those clues. 
And then you turned me loose. Well, that isn't true, any of it. I didn't kill Jason. And I couldn't have killed Candy. You saw the autopsy report. I was in San Francisco when she was shot. An autopsy, Lee, determines the time of death by the amount of decomposition in the body at the time of the examination. You delayed the decomposition by placing Candy's body in the freezer. Then on Sunday, you took the body out of the freezer, dumped it in the bay, knowing it wouldn't thaw out in the cold water until Monday. A laboratory analysis will prove the food taken out of the freezer to make room for Candy's body was refrozen after you dumped the body in the bay. That was freshly bought frozen food. You said so yourself. The grocer said that Jason didn't buy any frozen food on Saturday. You didn't know that when you shot him. That was your big mistake. Jason's body is out there somewhere, isn't it? Now that we know that, we'll find him. You really are the best. Of course you needed me to follow up on all those clues so quickly. If we didn't find Candy's body in time, your whole plan would have fallen apart. Well, either way, the object was to have him dead. A divorce would have made better sense. No. Alive, he humiliated me. All those girls. The cheaper, the better. You don't know what I took. What I would have gone on taking if only he hadn't said he was leaving me. Surely you understand. No, Lee, I, I don't. You're not a dream, you're not an angel, you're a man. I'm not a queen, I'm a woman. Take my hand. We'll build a space in the light. That we planned, and he will stay until it's time for you to go. Yes, we're different, worlds apart, we're not the same. We laughed and played at the start Like in a game You could have stayed outside my heart But in you came And here you stay until it's time for you to go Don't ask why And don't ask how And don't ask forever Love me Love Sergeant Enright says that you were brilliant. He said that if District Attorney Chapman had had his way, that he would have brought Lee to trial, and that once the alibis that she had set up had been discovered, that she would have been acquitted. And he said if that had happened, that the double jeopardy law would have prevented her from ever being brought to justice. You know what I can't figure out? What the clue was that got you started. My dad always said that it's some little clue that leads you to the big ones. But I can't figure out what that little clue was. And neither can Sergeant Enright. We went over all of them very carefully. Come on, Mac, give a girl some help. What was the little clue? 
I bet you if you just give me a little hint, I could guess it. Just a hint. One word hint. Just a little hint. <laughs> Let's see. Matches. Matches. It's a little clue. Matches. The ones that Sergeant Enright found in the wastebasket? Mm hmm Let's see. She wanted to lead you to Sausalito, right? Mm hmm Well, how did you know that the matches were a clue? The folder was full. Well, of course, nobody throws a book full of matches in the wastebasket. Well, I really think that I solved it. Because if I had cooked you dinner, instead of making you take icebox luck, you never would have been poking around the freezer and found the frozen macaroni. I guess I deserve a lot of credit, don't I? Mm-hmm. Come on. 